model in production for each project. Hello everyone, welcome to our talk. The topic for today is integrating high-performing feature store with KServe model serving. I'm Ted Chen. I'm with my colleague Qing Huang today. We are software engineers from IBM Silicon Valley Lab in California. I'm here to talk about feature store and some of the options to set up a high-performing fixed feature store. And uh, Qing will go over KServe with Model Mesh and how to integrate the fixed feature store with Model Mesh in a cube cluster and show you an end-to-end -end demo. So first, a bit of background for people who are not familiar with feature store. Uh, features are individual values that are input to machine learning models to predict an outcome. Feature engineering, on the other hand, is the process of generating or extract the features from collected data. So many ML organizations store feature in a centralized fashion and each organization have different requirements for feature store. But in general, it can be seen as a data management layer that enables data scientists and ML engineers to create, share, and distribute ML features. Um, the term uh, feature store uh, was first introduced in Uber's machine learning platform called Michelangelo back in 2017. It was developed to build reliable, uniform, and reproducible pipelines for creating and managing training and prediction data at scale. Before the system was built, the data scientists were building models from their laptops. The engineering team were building one off system to serve model in production for each project. There was no established way to deploy models in production. But of course, Uber is not alone. Many other companies were facing similar problems. Airbnb, Spotify, Pinterest, and Twitter uh, they were all looking for solutions to manage and operate their ML pipelines and deployment process. So they were all building their own in-house feature store to uh, solve their own needs. Some are open source, other were closed source. The term feature store has since become more uh, generic in recent year. In 2020 and 2021, there were an explosion of managed feature store starting to appear, such as Tecton, Databrick, and Vertex AI SageMaker feature stores. Uh, just to name a few, among these feature stores, Feast feature store was one of them. Um, Feast was originally founded by Gojek. Willem Pinar, the creator of Feast said it was developed to address the data challenges at Gojek for scaling machine learning, for uh, ride hailing, food delivery, digital payments, fraud detection, and other use cases. It was developed in 2018, open sourced in 2019, and joined the LFAI and Data Foundation in 2021. Uh, Feast is one of the most popular feature store projects on GitHub, currently at 3.3k GitHub stars. Three main concepts of Feast. The offline store uh, is a, ser a serving layer for retrieving features for the model training. The offline store supports many data warehouses. The online store is a serving layer for retrieving the latest features, which are features materialized or synced from the offline to the online store. 
Uh, this is after you have done with your model training. Uh, this provide a list of choices for offline, online store backends, which we will go over later. Uh, the third one is registry. It is a file-based object store that is generated or updated by running the fist apply command. Uh, it contains uh, serialized feature metadata in a materialization history. Registry is a central catalog uh, which allows data scientists to research, discover, and collaborate on features. Um, the feature repo is a single truth uh, of source of feature definitions and uh, feature store config. It contains a feature repo YAML config and the feature store.py, which defines the data source, entity feature views, and feature services stored in your chosen offline store. Um, running fist apply CLI command will refresh uh, the registry object. Um, fist provides Python SDK and CLI for the downstream ML training and inferencing and the operational tasks. Uh, for example, the get offline features SDK method is used for point in time feature retrieval from the offline store for model training. Uh, Feast apply CLI command is used to sync the latest uh, features into the online store. Uh, the get online features SDK method is then used to get the latest feature from the online store, which is uh, integration point for our downstream model serving layer. Um, the optional feature server is a front end to the online store. Feature servers are optional. They provide REST or gRPC front end to the online store in case your program doesn't use uh, the Python SDK. Uh, for this talk, we'll focus more on the online store. Um, keep in mind that uh, Feast does not um, resolve the following problems. Uh, first, it does not want to be a ETL tools. Uh, Feast is not a feature engineering tool. This is not a data warehouse. Uh, this assumes that you have already done the feature engineering job using an upstream ETL tool and you have stored those features in your data warehouse. This provides the SDK to retrieve features from your data warehouse uh, in a consistent way instead. Uh, last, FIST uh, is not a general purpose data catalog. FIST is purely focused on cataloging the features for use in machine learning pipelines or systems, and only to the extent of facilitating the reuse of features. There are many ways to use the FIST SDK uh, for feature serving. Um, by default, it comes with uh, three providers maintained by the FIST community, plus a vendor-specific provider. Um, the provider is an implementation of feature store components uh, using specific combinations of offline online store registries in a specific environment. For example, the GCP provider uses data store, BigQuery, and GCS for the online store, offline store, and registry, respectively. If you don't use any of the cloud providers, the choices for the offline online store and registry would fall under the local provider, which means the SQLite or Redis for the online store, S3 or BigQuery, for the offline store, plus any of the additional offline store plugins 
such as Snowflake, Hive, Postgres, Trino, and Spark. Um, some of them are provided by third party or experimental currently. However, if your offline store is not listed, the custom offline or online stores can be done by implementing uh, methods in the abstract offline or online store classes. Well, let's talk about our scenario. Um, in our deployment, our model serving platform is KServe, and it is based on Kubernetes. So naturally, uh, we deploy our online store on Kubernetes. Uh, we won't go into uh, too much of the offline store and the model training part since our focus is mainly model serving, uh, which only requires the latest features. But in the FISC community website, uh, there are many examples and tutorials uh, of end-to-end -end, uh, scenarios for populating the online store from scratch. For Kubernetes, uh, the Redis backend online store is recommended. There are two options for the high-performance online feature retrieval with the Redis online store. First is a Java feature server. It is an optional gRPC feature serving front end to the uh, Redis online store, uh, which can be deployed quickly using Helm install as a service into your kube cluster. Uh, a benchmark result has shown that the Java feature server may achieve a uh, near sub-millisecond latency response time, depending on the number of features retrieved. In a study done by the FIS community, it's seven to 10 times faster than the counterpart Python feature server option uh, when retrieving a row of 50 to uh, 250 features. Uh, there are pre-built Python uh, and Java gRPC clients to retrieve features. Uh, in our case, uh, our downstream model serving layer does not use, um, in any case, I mean, if your downstream model serving layer does not use Python or Java clients, um, Additional clients in other language can also be generated from the portal definition using uh, the code generator. The second option is the newly developed Go-based Python SDK, uh, which the community claims much faster than the original Python SDK. Uh, we tried all three options here, and uh, since our KServe transformer is Python-based, and uh, we choose uh, the Go-based Python SDK for the integration. And the next, I'll uh, pass it to Ching. Uh, Ching will talk about uh, KServe with Model Mesh. Ching's your turn, thank you. Hi, my name is Ching Huang from IBM. I will give you a quick overview of KServe with Model Mesh and do a short demo of model inference using online features. Previously called KF Serving, KServe is a CNCF incubating project. It's a standards based model serving platform built on top of Kubernetes. It is aimed to support production grade model serving use cases. It has a set of high performance and high abstraction interfaces so that the users can deploy and run models in their favorite machine learning frameworks. This would include TensorFlow, PyTorch, XGBoost, Scikit-Learn, Onyx, and TensorRT. Currently, NVIDIA's Triton server Seldon's ML server and PyTorch's TorchServe all support this inference protocol. 
It is open source and runs anywhere Kubernetes runs. So you don't have to worry about vendor locking to use this serving solution. As we all know, Kubernetes has certain resource limitations, such as maximum number of pods in a node and the maximum number of IP addresses in a cluster. Model Mesh in KServe is designed specifically to address these limitations. It allows you to run thousands of models and to frequently change the models as well with high density and scalability. Basically, it serves multiple models per container. It has the logic to unload inactive models and load them back just in time whenever needed. So the utilization of the available compute resources is totally optimized. It also has the intelligence to manage in-memory model data across clusters of running pods, all based on the usage of those models over time. Let's take a look at uh, the model mesh architecture. Essentially, serving runtime deployments are created on demand to host compatible predictors or models. On this chart, you will see two deployments of runtimes. They're serving for 10 models in total. In each pod, there will be three containers. The first one is to implement model mesh logic. The second one is the adapter or puller to retrieve models from the S3 object store. And the third one is, of course, the model server like Triton or ML server to do model inference. There's also a Kubernetes service here to work with all pods across all deployments. The external inference requests are going through this particular service. One of the model mesh pods will actually act as the ingress pod and uh, routes the requests to the other pods as needed. Finally, the SCD instance uh, is to coordinate the operations and also to persist model states. We wanted to see how much we could pack into a single node with model mesh. So we ran a scalability test um, in a fairly small Coops cluster. It has only eight vCPUs and 64 GB of memory. At the end, we were able to deploy 20K simple stream models into two serving runtime pods. We then sent in thousands of concurrent inference requests to simulate a high traffic scenario. Model Mesh actually achieved nicely with a single digit milliseconds of latency um, when the QPS is less than 1000. I think that's pretty impressive. All right, here are the highlights for KSERF with model mesh. First off, the standardized inference protocol works for common machine learning frameworks. We get the, the GPU auto scaling and scale to zero by leveraging K native. There's a uh, explainer component that allows you to analyze model behaviors. The canary rollouts make it easy to distribute the traffic to a new model version during a model upgrade. 
Custom plugins can be developed as well to do pre- and post-processing around the model prediction. The intelligent model placement and loading, uh, as I talked about earlier, helps to optimize performance and resource usage. And we have the efficiency, scalability, and the flexibility to serve thousands of models. All right, next I will go over how we put Feast and the model mesh serving together to make a prediction. KSERF has this transformer component, which is customizable for pre and post processing for inference. So naturally, we created a feast transformer to retrieve real-time features and uh, perform data transformation as needed. As Ted mentioned earlier, Feast provides multiple ways to fetch online features via REST server, a Java-based gRPC server, or a Go-based SDK. Our transformer can communicate with Feast in all three scenarios. In this diagram and a short demo coming up, we have taken the Go-based SDK approach. It is recommended for production use by the Feast community. The inference request will come into the transformer first and gets routed to Feast for real-time feature retrieval. Then we transform the augmented data to protobuf message and send it over to model mesh via gRPC for inference. At the end, we transform the results in protobuf message back to the expected data format for outputs. Essentially, we applied the Go-based SDK and the gRPC for inference to achieve the best end-to-end -end performance. As far as the demo, we wanted to find the best candidate for driver request based on the most recent driver features. In this case, we use the driver's account rate, convert rate, and average daily trips. We also would like to serve multiple regions. For instance, San Francisco and San Jose might use similar but separately trended models. The initial input will be driver IDs, and the output is, of course, the uh, driver rankings. Let's see how this uh, Feast Transformer with Model Mesh can make it happen. We have everything set up in a three-node group cluster. There are a couple of parts to run the controllers for KSERV and Model Mesh. As you can see, the Feast Online Feature Store uh, is a Redis server. We have a cron job to update the features based on an offline store in S3. There's a single serving runtime pod, including the ML server, to serve two predictors pre-trained in Scalar. And each transformer will also get uh, its own pod to handle the incoming requests. Finally, two inference services will be deployed and we will send in two driver requests, one with two drivers in San Francisco and another one with four drivers in San Jose. So these requests are going to be using the online features and eventually processed by different models as indicated in this diagram. 
Okay, here's my terminal. Um, I have a coop cluster with this uh, Redis server for Feast, and uh, I'm going to deploy two inference services. Um, you can take a look at this one. As you can see, um, in my deployment spec, there's a predictor as well as a transformer. The entity IDs and the feature keys are specified here. I can also uh, request for additional resources if needed. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead and uh, deploy them. Okay. Right, let's take a look at my pods. Um, as you can see here, uh, the serving runtime uh, pod is being created. And pretty soon, uh, my transformer pods are up as well. All right. Uh, I was sending a couple of requests um, uh, to do inference. Uh, basically, you can see one here for San Jose, for instance, uh, the other one for San Francisco. Um, I have a small script here to make a curl request right, uh, using these input files. Okay, so let's uh, send in the request for San Francisco. Uh, as you can see, quickly it's coming back with the results going to Feast and the model mesh. Similarly, I can make a request for San Jose. Um, yeah, I got the, the driver rankings back for four drivers. Um, as you can notice here, the model name is padded with some string here. Uh, to make it uh, unique across uh, multiple namespaces. All right, this concludes uh, the short demo. Back to you, Ted. Okay, so thanks, Jim, for the demo. Uh, for a quick recap, in this talk, we have introduced an open source feature store of Feast and how you can set up your own high performing Feast online serving in a cube cluster and get the online features with the Go based Feast SDK. Also, we have shown you a demo how to integrate the open source model mesh model serving layer with Feast for multi region model serving in a cube cluster. Um, so coming up, uh, we have a few talks from IBM. Uh, please participate if you're interested. And let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.